I like yours too. Welcome back. I'm here with Lynn Dvorak today, and she's the president of GRF. They had their monthly meeting yesterday. We're just complimenting each other on our my, my little stars on my bow tie, and she has a, a stars and stripe necklace on today. And yesterday, the entire board, it was sort of your pre-July 4th celebration. You were all nicely attired in red, white, and blue. Yep, we planned that. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was, was the very colors nice. of the day. <laughs> Before I forget, because 4th of July, we are closed. I want to make mention that we are replaying the GRF meeting today, and that will replay at uh, 2 o'clock today. It ran three hours and five minutes, so I just want to make note of that before I forget. All right, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll show that again today. Okay. And then, of course, a week from today, that's our normal 6 p.m. showing of the, uh, of the GRF meeting. So uh, again, welcome. Thank Busy you. meeting yesterday. Yes. And uh, one of the things uh, we wanted to talk about, it was part of the talk yesterday, is you will be doing another informational meeting on the uh, Recreation Master Plan. This will be on July 15th, Clubhouse 7 this time, right. at 6.30 p.m. to approximately 8 o'clock. Right. And uh, it's intended for people who <clears throat> have not had the opportunity to see the presentation that are not aware of all of the components of the Recreation Master Plan Alternative 3 that was approved by GRF. And we will be updating with um, any changes, any additions that we, mm -hmm. that the committee, the ad hoc committee has um, made decisions on. Um, we also met with the architect at the last ad hoc committee meeting and sent him back with some ideas and changes that we wanted to see on his preliminary or draft plans mm -hmm. and that will be at the next ad hoc committee meeting so um, those things will be discussed at this presentation on the 15th and then after the next um, recreation ad hoc committee meeting when the architect brings more of the kinds of things that we have uh, asked him to do. The next presentation in August will incorporate all of those. So we're constantly updating um, our presentation so that the, the community can see the latest that's going on. Okay, and as uh, many of you yesterday mentioned at the, uh, at the meeting, uh, you had a lot of people get up and talk and uh, there's a lot of different rumors and things like that. But n nonetheless, you all commented on, I forget who actually said it this way, that this is your molding clay right now. Yeah. Nothing has been set. It's, you've got a master plan and you're gonna constantly be tweaking it until you get that point where it's, uh, it looks about as good as, it's, it, as you can get it. And uh, getting input from uh, the people that live here is vital. And, Absolutely. Uh, when you hear those inputs, they might have a really good idea or a little tweaking that they would like to see, and it's constantly being changed until it gets up to obviously a certain point. A absolutely. Uh, the concept that Alternative 3 was gave us the basics and what <clears throat> goes into those basics, what goes into the fitness center, what goes into the new main lounge is all up for discussion. Mm -hmm. And for instance, the Alternative 3 called for a full-size gymnasium. And um, after much discussion with the ad hoc committee, uh, members of the community, and staff, we recognized that the only thing that you need a full-size gymnasium for mm -hmm. is full court basketball. And mm -hmm that doesn't seem to be a need in the community. People who got up and said they had tried to organize it in the past to, with no success. So why spend the money on something like that? We can put it towards um, the indoor pools or something else right. in the plan that people really want to see. Yeah, and that's a good example of getting input and uh, having the flexibility of making different decisions down the road. And uh, I think it's very good that people attend this meeting. I just want to make mention too, that you can also go to the website, lagunawoodsvillage.com forward slash recreation, forward slash recreation master plan. So you can get information there as well. One of the things um, ongoing in the village over the, really the past uh, several years 
is the replacement of the buses, the Orion buses that have found, been around, I don't know how long. <laughs> Too long. <laughs> yeah, but um, there was an appropriation for that and uh, to replace four of the Orion buses. And is, is that the final four? I'm not sure how many are still out um, there. I, I believe it is. It, um, we're going from the, the 23 passenger Orion down to the 16 passenger buses. Um, and, and we're doing this because we feel that when our study of ridership is complete, mm -hmm. we will be um, manipulating, so to speak, uh, the, the uh, bus routes to accommodate what the actual ridership is. Mm -hmm. And um, we know and we, we constantly hear people say there's no one on the buses as they go by. So we really don't think we need all of our buses to have 23 passenger okay. seats. And some of the routes could be the smaller buses. And until we have all of the data, um, we don't know exactly where, where it will lead, but we think we, we can definitely um, get by with 16 passenger on okay. some of our routes. So these will be uh, possibly a different manufacturer than the yes. larger buses we see right now. Right. And also what you're implementing is this, is uh, these stickers, these tags. Yes. And this will be a way to uh, track the ridership in a much more accurate level. Yes. Um, on July 9th, we'll be handing out stickers that will go on the residents' passes, mm -hmm. ID passes. And um, they are RFIDs, which is mm -hmm. you know just a computer chip, basically. Right. And we have a, um, uh, an, a um, counter in the buses that will count people as they come in and record <coughs> a number for mm -hmm. that person. It'll simply be a number. We, don't, we won't know who the person is. But will tell us who gets on, where they get on, um, where they get off, and what time of day they're doing this so that we can then see uh, how many actual riders we have mm -hmm. um, rather than just how many trips people take and, uh, and then uh, reorganize our, our, um, our bus lines. Mm -hmm. So at, you get a nice at, accurate count. And we'll have an accurate count of the usage of the buses, not, not just trips of, of people, but actually who is riding or you know how, how many people are riding and how often they use it and where they're going and and coming from okay and again these tags will be unobtrusive you won't know who these people are we won't are, know who the people are but as they get on it will uh it will just read it and read it. meeting um they're not gonna have to hold it in front of something uh, they have to imagine. be within um 12 inches yeah. of the scanner and yeah. it just scans in the number. So mm -hmm. And then when they get off, it'll pick that up as well, I would imagine. Um, I don't think we're going to start with okay. a get, get off. We, we kind of assume that when, where they get off is where they've gotten on. Okay. Or um, they'll be getting on again where they got off. Mm -hmm. So if they're, you know, if they're taking several buses, they'll have gotten off and gotten on at another bus in that area and so on. Okay. Um, so it, it is, it, it, you know, we're, it's it's not to be an exact science or mm -hmm. system it will be give us trends and that's what we need to know okay continuing on uh, the that uh, i should say that committee the <laughs> mobility and vehicles committee you also talked about uh, authorizing a uh, pilot program for three electric utility vehicles and also uh, the charging stations that would go yes. along with that yes um, we feel that the electric vehicles have have advanced enough that we can we we're pretty certain we can use them in our community mm -hmm. in many areas and this pilot program is to determine just how efficient they are um, the charging stations will record how often they have to be charged how much time it takes and um, and we know that some of these can be left out in the field like we do now. They don't have to be charged every night. Mm -hmm. And um, we can track how often they have to come back to be charged and how they deal with the kinds of work we do. We have a very hilly community. Um, and 
you know, we just, we're not absolutely certain that everything will work as we plan, but we can see which jobs they will be good for and which they won't. So it will uh, eventually substitute as we purchase vehicles for replacement, we, we hope that we can go to the electric vehicle and save on our fuel costs. Okay, do you know uh, the size of these vehicles yet, or exactly um, what they are? I'm it, looking at, at, the, at the price, um, you know, the appropriation, uh, 47500 for the vehicles, 7600 for the charging stations for three vehicles. Uh, that's, they wouldn't be large. I mean, you can go out right now, and if you purchase your own, some of those electric vehicles, uh, like a Chevy Volt, the full price is nearly that price. So, right, right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, these don't have all the features of what you'd need to go down the road. Right. It, they're, a couple of them are w replacement for our mules. Right. You know, those okay. little utility vehicles. Mm -hmm. And um, one looks like one of our vans. So, okay. Um, it, 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 you know, it, it will replace a couple of different vehicles that we have. All right, very good. So good uh, study. Uh, do you know when these uh, might be coming in? Do you well, have a date yet or an approximate? Uh, I don't have a date, an exact date yet, but it will be shortly. Okay, very good. And uh, also, uh, one of the things that was talked about yesterday was to install some additional uh, uh, monitoring cameras over at the Village Greens. Yes. Well, actually, not or additional. They were, we have four cameras there now, but the way they were positioned... They were too high. They were right? too high yeah. and looked down. So um, we are going to move two of them out okay. farther so that they get a more bird's eye view of the parking lot and mm -hmm. the area. And um, it, the cost involved the trenching for the, the uh, lines to get to those cameras. Okay. Also, uh, the MNC committee, uh, one of the things that uh, you're moving forward here is looking into alternative uh, energy, and uh, you're going to have a pilot program in that as well. Yes, that is something I'm, I'm really excited about because we've had so much input from the community about solar energy, alternative energy, and this program, will, we will be testing three different kinds of alternative energy, the photovoltaic cells, mm -hmm. the solar hot water heater, heating at Clubhouse One pool, and um, fuel cells or natural gas generation at Clubhouse Five. The photovoltaic will be at the golf maintenance building. And um, <coughs> we approved hiring a consultant to determine what needs we we have at those three locations, what will the service level will need to be. Um, that consultant will also look into incentive programs, um, maintenance issues, anything that w you know we as a community need to know before we go full bore into alternative energy. And um, I, I'm I'm really excited to see this finally start. Yeah, it sounds exciting. A couple times yesterday when we were talking about um, these pilot programs, people were uh, saying, it's, it's particularly on the energy one, why not just get it going without a pilot program? And the second thing was a few people got up and, uh, you know, saying, hey, we can help out with this. We have uh, some uh, knowledge in this. We've studied this type of thing, whatever, whatever it might have been. It was particularly the alternative energy. But you made the point that you certainly value their help. You'd like them to come to their committee meetings and uh, maybe even one day become one of the, uh, help out with these committees. But there is a liability issue to actually use their services. Right, right. Um, we have, and, and Bert Moldau um, got up to the mic yesterday and he's been very instrumental in giving staff information and his expertise. Um, and we, we welcome that input, but as a board, because we are not spending our money, we're spending the community's money, mm -hmm. we definitely have a liability issue. We need to make sure that we have people that um, have the credentials and um, the insurance, <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, and and so uh, we will always look at the input from the community, but we really need to be careful about 
hiring mm -hmm. or, or using so-called free services um, when we're looking at something like this. And I know the community is very anxious to get started. Is, uh, you know, they feel there's enough information out there and we should just put it in, but there are a lot of things that we as a board have to take into account. First of all, we can't go into the mutuals and just do the mutuals. That's, mm -hmm. that's their purview. Right. Um, we, you know, are, we deal only with the facilities, the common area facilities, and so um, we have to take a much more pragmatic approach and look at it carefully and how we want to proceed because it is a big expense. Um, as a commercial entity, which we are, we are not a residential uh, owner, mm -hmm. there are a lot more um, uh, incentives for a, an individual resident than there are for uh, commercial mm -hmm. um, and for a nonprofit, um, again, we you know we we just don't have the same um, things to look at. The ads that you see in the Sunday paper right. don't apply to us. Right. <laughs> so um, th this is the best way to start and be cautious about how we go about it, so that we know that when when we really get into alternative energy, we know what to expect. Right, exactly. And then uh, finally, uh, one of the discussions yesterday uh, was the joint task force to analyze the GRF trust and bylaws, and there was discussion about that. And uh, there were several uh, resolutions that were within there uh, yesterday that you talked about. And it's a little bit complicated for people to it really grasp. It is very grasp. complicated. It was even you know, complicated for directors who deal with this on mm -hmm. a daily basis. Um, <clears throat> Over the past several years, it was uh, we hired a consultant, um, uh, a professional f law firm that dealt with trusts, and we had them analyze the trust and found that we have some discrepancies between the trust, the bylaws, and actual practice. And so this um, task force was put together to identify those areas and to come up with uh, concepts that we that we could all agree on all the mutuals and GRF and use those concepts and tell our attorneys okay put it into legalese and and uh, tell us how we have we can change the trust the bylaws and practice or any one or all three to um, so that they they coincide and mm -hmm. and they make sense, and there were three areas that involved amendment of the trust. And to amend the trust, uh, you must have the approval of all four corporations, including GRF, which is why GRF was involved mm -hmm. in this process. And um, one was that we've been providing services to the mutuals, and the trust doesn't provide. Are the authority for us to do that. It only says that we can deal with the facilities, but we are not allowed to do common area in the mutuals, mm -hmm. that owned by the mutuals. But practice has that we've been supplying um, our equipment and, and doing this for the mutuals. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to bring that into compliance in the trust. Um, we also had a um, uh, problem with the uh, sale, leasing, mortgaging, uh, excuse me, sale, leasing, or what is it, of um, land mm -hmm. um, uh, and purchasing. And a couple of years ago, the bylaws were changed so that the corporate directors, the mutual directors, would have to vote if GRF wanted to purchase, sell, or lease any property in the uh, community. But the trust says that GRF has the sole discretion on that. Mm -hmm. So it, on its face value, we have a conflict between right. the trust and the bylaws. And GRF has no problem. In fact, it was GRF that, w that uh, promoted the change in the bylaws to allow the corporate members to vote on this and have veto power. And so now we want to bring the trust into compliance with the, the bylaws. And the last thing that was involved 
is the trust will automatically terminate as it is now in 2024. And people say, well, that's not a problem, but it is because if, it, if the trust does terminate, we have to then divide up the assets among the mutuals. And the <coughs> way the trust was set up originally is that United would get 58% of all the assets, third, 40% plus a little mm -hmm. extra, and then um, uh, mutual 50, about 1%. But all of the, for, any, for at least 20 years, all of the facilities, the improvements that have been done to the facilities, any new facilities were built with money that was equal per manor throughout the community. So uh, if you look at, say, Mutual um, uh, United and mm -hmm. Third Mutual, it's almost a 50-50. Right. And yet United would get 58%. Um, we so thought it's a about, complicated issue. It is a very yeah. complicated issue. And we knew that the attorneys, we had an, a taste of that at one meeting where the attorneys would get involved in, you know, United gets 58. And so there was going to be an argument. So the bottom line was we could either go through that process or just extend the trust so mm -hmm. that it stays in effect and, and we don't have to worry about dissolving it. All right, so a uh, complicated issue, an ongoing one, but uh, you have to bring the trust and the bylaws, the cohesiveness uh, That's right. together That's there. all this is. It's, yeah. it's not about making major changes. It's just about getting everything to agree. All right, so uh, once again, uh, that meeting is going to be replayed today, Wednesday, at 2 p.m. It ran three hours and five minutes, and then we will repeat that next week at 6 p.m. So again, because tomorrow's a holiday, we're not going to be showing it uh, at its normal uh, Thursday replay time. It'll be replayed today. Lynn, thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice to see you. Have a happy fourth. You as well. All right, thank folks, you. we'll be right back with Arroyo from Age Wealth.